Hello, everybody. Uh, today we're going to talk about when you start getting, when you move out of the present moment, you, when you start looking for an end in the other person, if you keep looking for this end, you know, then you lost presence with that person and with yourself too. And so, look, I'll show you the tree. Look at this tree around, off there. Can you see that? The wind just blowing in the leaves gently. That's like us. We're like, we're souls. We're souls and we have a body and we're animated and we forget. You don't remember the depths of beingness that you have. If, if the same creator, okay, we don't think about this. We just take these things for granted, right? I have a bit of a cold right now, so my head's a little swimmy. Um, but nevertheless, you can still show up, show up for your duties, you know, for for what you've committed to, to be a part of all that you can. I mean, take rest when you need to take rest too, but. And so the same creator, the creator that created the whole universe, that there's rings around Saturn. I heard the rings around Saturn are braided. Do you know what I mean? It's just like, there's not only rings around Saturn, but they're braided, you know? And so it's just like the same divine love, the same God that took the time, you know, to braid the rings around a planet, you know? Have this beauty, have every snowflake be different. Have every water drop be different. Have every person, you know, we're all, we're all like this, you know, we look different, but then we're from the same source. We're from the same oneness. And so I was just noticing, you know, like I had it in my mind when I was just in Rome, I wanted to get this to this church, the church of St. Peter that had these chains that the angel Gabriel or the angel of the Lord at the time broke off of Peter. And it's hard for us to believe these kinds of things. So it takes faith. It's not, you know, people that don't have eyes of faith that haven't had these kinds of experiences and spent time in prayer and in intimacy with divine love, you know, uh, then, you know, these things don't make sense to you. But nevertheless, that's where I wanted to go. And it said it was going to close at like 6.30 and it was like 5.30 when I left, but I was walking the wrong way. My map showed me the wrong way. And then I got in a taxi. I was going to pay money for a taxi and I didn't want to. I'd rather just walk, but I had to pay money for a taxi to get me there before they closed. And, you know, I was trying to be present with the taxi and not be like mean or anything, but you know, I'm speaking English and trying to do my Italian. He's speaking Italian. And I showed him the church on my phone, but somehow the other church came up when we were searching for it. So he was taking us to the church of St. Peter and St. Paul. And I'm like, no, just the church of St. Peter. <laughs> you know what I mean? And it's like, here you are. It's like, what kind of a Christian? <laughs> you know, and it's not about, it's not about like conforming to some idea of what a Christian is. You know, it's like, now, how can we be in highest consciousness and highest love and highest presence like Christ always was and always always teaching, you know, not be your idea of a religious person. But I noticed, you know, I heard the story by Eckhart Tolle about this monk that had thought he got enlightenment and was in this place where for like 60 days he meditated and they brought him food. And then all of a sudden he had to go and renew his passport. And he's just like yelling in the passport office. <laughs> you know, that, that story can come to mind for us because it's just like, he's like, whoops. You know, he's like, I learned more from that experience in the passport office than the 60 days feeling the Zen bliss oneness with, with divine love with God, you know, and so notice, I can use that as a funny example for all of us. I bring up any of these examples for us. 
that as soon as my agenda, my agenda of getting to this church where these chains were released, because I wanted to pray these prayers for my friends, the chains would be released, you know, and I had it in my mind that if I didn't pray in front of these chains, maybe the chains in their lives wouldn't be released. You know, it's like, look at the chains that came up of me, of moving out of the present moment, you know, of not being present and not seeing this person as you're just a person that's supposed to get me to this place. No, he's a soul. He's a soul in uh, in a body um, serving as um, in the capacity as a taxi driver in that moment. But, you know, um, and it ends up, I got there. He got me there at 628, like the driving in Rome, like they just make their own lanes. You just have to be like this and trust that they know what they're doing. You're like on a magic carpet, you know? They're just going wherever they want, you know? What is that song? A whole new world. Hmm. That's a good song. That's a good song. Anyway, um, and so coming back to the present moment, when you treat other people like an object, you know, you get this experience of you being an object or thinking you have to let other people treat you like an object. Never let anyone treat you like an object. You are a soul that God designed and created. I'm, I'm getting a picture in my spirit right now of, um, that saying, it's like, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. And my friend Charlie Mackesy, one time on Facebook a long time ago had this drawing and it was like God drawing on an easel, you know, and you're drawing right near to God and it's like draw. And it's kind of like that sometimes. You live your life as a poem, as a song, as, as music. You live that. Draw near to divine love and God will draw near to you. And you draw near to him him he's beyond him or her by being in the present and stop looking to these ends people are not objects god is not an object to be used god is love god is love so god's nature is always to love and god gave us everything you know look to what christ did to understand that you know i read this saying even the buddha was the word buddha means awakened it says he says in this writings that they said the buddha wrote the Christ is coming. I am just a seeker of the truth. Follow the Christ when he comes. You know, he's here to reveal all things, you know, to bring us into this salvation. But I don't want to, it's not about a manipulation. It's about go study these things if you want to know them. Just be in this present moment and be still and know that I am God. God is, I woke up in the middle of the night, right? Because I had this cold and I had jet lag and blah, 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 right? This is just what I'm experiencing, you know, accepted in the moment. And it was like, the Lord is my shepherd. And it brought me back into the oneness in the middle of whatever nightmares I was having or whatever. The Lord is my shepherd. The I am is my best friend. I can be, you know, Jesus says, I came to give you life, this life, back into your soul life, living from your, your heart and the center of your being, bringing your heart. I saw an article by... Willie Nelson's son, I think his name is Luke, Lucas, Lucas Nelson. I, I saw him singing this Hand on the Wheel song that I sang the other day. And so I looked up, you know, who is this person? And I saw this article and he said, I never get nervous anymore, you know, because something inside of him is intuition or the Holy Spirit. I don't know if he has the Holy Spirit in him, but, you know, the same John 1, 9 says the same light that lit the world enlightened us all so we're part of that oh my son is calling so anyway he said um when you bring he said when you bring your consciousness into your heart you don't get nervous anymore you just get expansive because you're in that place of serving of love of presence of beingness right i'm, I'm adding to what he was saying but i'm like he gets it right it was i felt like a brother a brother in this world in that and so it is like entering in this artistic plane together and understanding a shepherd would find go and leave the 99 sheep to go find the lost one and put it around its shoulders so that the shepherd and their shepherdesses too rachel was a shepherdess i think it was rachel maybe it was rebecca i think it was I don't know, but Rebecca or Rachel in the Old Testament, it's awesome. Anyway, put the sheep right here so that the sheep gets used to your smell. So they don't go off again and wander like towards the wolves or by a cliff or whatever, right? 
it's just learning how to love for real for real right and and god wants to give us that divine love wants to give us that and wants us to know this intimate love and not this lecherous you know i experienced a guy coming up to me in the train station he's like i'm a doctor blah 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 i'm like i don't care i'm a doctor you know like you know i don't know i wasn't trying to be rude but he's just like i'd like you t to take you back to my lab and i'm like i i, I bet you would <laughs> like he was like i'd like to spend the night with you and i'm like i think you have the italian wrong do you mean you'd like to spend the evening like taking me out to dinner he's like well, I'd like to spend the evening with you and then the night with you. And I was like, you are like, it was so gross. I felt like so uh, offended just because like, it was just so, um, you know, it's like people are like a steak that you order, you know, it's like, no, you're a soul. That guy's a soul and I'm a soul. And so you have this ability to live in your soul self and actualize that and know what that is and grow in that and say no to the rest say no to the rest because you're always worth more no matter how people treated you in your past let go of that programming ask god to help you let go of that programming all right i wish you so much love thanks for being here share and like and comment and all that stuff that helps grow this channel much love